Justin Gould, aka J Prophet, man. Coming at you from Providence, Rhode Island, man. Underground fucking hip hop, man. Grunge hip hop, Airworm Entertainment. What's up? Okay. When and how did you become J Prophet? I think it was like back in like 2014. Uh, I just started a project. It was like in a little area of like West Warwick. And uh, yeah, it was like my first show and I actually did it unmasked. And uh, yeah, but it was still a kick ass show. <clears throat> I mostly just did it for fun, but you know, like it also came as like a prediction as well. You know, like I was just, I told myself one day, fuck it, I'm gonna do it. And that's what I did. As long as I kept doing it, you know, it made me feel good inside, you know, so. So it had, had a feeling for you when it, you did it and it gave you some type of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, of course. Good. Who are your biggest influences in music? I would say that some of my big influences comes out of, like, many different genres of music, such as, like, uh, not only just like hip hop and old school hip hop, like I used to listen to Tupac back in the day, even like Biggie, like with, with my older brother and everything though, but uh, uh, my other younger brother, like he was into like metal music, but I also went to festivals back in the day, discovered more genres of like different types of metal music, different types of like hip hop, different types of like alternative, but mostly probably like my biggest influence, like definitely like Korn, Head P.E., such as like some like metal bands and like rock bands and uh, with the hip hop too though like even back in the day I was like a big Twisted fan too you know but like um, I just uh, I always enjoyed many branches of music you know but all of the original it's all about like you know like finding many different types and it's all gonna grow no matter what mm. man man we, we all come to, to, the, to the biggest question of, the, of it all is that why do you wear the mask and where do you get that influence from? <clears throat> well, I get, the uh, I get that influence out of my own persona of like how I base myself as a character in my music too because like in my own music itself like this mask not only just proves like who I am as like a character in my music like it is like like another side of me i would say um but at the same time it, it is also like a subliminal message as well it, it people can take it as how they even want to take it like it, it, it's up to them but no matter what though it's basically just uh, the music that matters and my face does not really have to exist it has to be like much of a visual and like you know it's all about feeling like free you know like doing whatever you want and not caring and whoever's going to support you or not like it's all about how you you, you want to do it too mm -hmm. you know but other than that though i i would say that i uh, i wear the mask just because my face doesn't really have to give a fuck about like with the music itself too like i can be who i want to be with the mask if i want like there's been times i've done shows like i've done shows with the mask off you know but at the same time too though like this mask also proves along with like the persona of my music that like it's not my face that matters, it's actually the music itself. Mm. Uh, I like that. And how do you view music different from others? Um, uh, like I said before, it's like all based out of like originality and like as like my persona of music, it brings out its own self of the art itself. Like it's just uh, the art of music speaks for itself, as, as much as I could say. You know? mm, but like, it's an artist. It's yeah, it. but like, I mean, like, I don't ever like try to like copyright or anything like that. Basically, I just, uh, oh, look at that, got a little bit of makeup right there. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but um, basically, like, um, I follow my own way of like, um, uh, self-production. And uh, not only just self-production, but like I, I create the image of itself of what the music really is to me. Mm -hmm. You can envision the music yeah. image. Yep. Explain about your style of music. Um, it's definitely um, 
some of it's pretty heavy. Some some of it is, uh, you know, like uh, emotional. There's a lot of uh, subliminal message. It's diverse. There's a lot of scream. There's a lot of just like, uh, you know, ripping the shit up and fucking lyrically going spasmatic to, you know. But I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, right there, man. I got like itch right under that man stuff. But you know, I deal with it all the time. Don't fucking matter. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Now, you could say all this, but what kind of impact are you in, in, imploding to the world? What what are you trying to make, uh, the impact you're trying to make people understand about you? Um, <clears throat> more of like understanding like the subliminal message in my music too, because like we live in a land of like, like this is supposed to be America and then the land of the free and we're over here in fucking 2018. You got people acting like idiots, people trying to make decisions. You got kids fucking snoring, uh, snorting, eating, smoking Tide Pods and shit. And that's just, you know, like, why not, like, just try to s- send out a sub- not only just a subliminal message, but a message to the people that, like, what they need to hear instead of what they want to hear. You know, because nowadays everybody's all fighting, everything's over, like, stupid bullshit, though. But, like, we, we, the truth really matters the most nowadays and that's all the, what my message in my music is trying to explore and that's what uh, not only just to explore to stop the fighting and to stop the well, well not, not to stop the fighting but let people see the ugly truth as well you know mm-hmm. and like not only like into like an individual but even like groups of people that like um how would I say it look like groups of people that have like a certain like disagreement on something like you, you, you're talking about like loads of different things too you know that like that, that is so much wrong and not only that this country though but like this world too like we're not evolving we're devolving and that's pretty much the message that I'm trying to like uh, bring to people devolving. I like that yeah. now devolving uh as you see these people that come to you and they, they understand your message, explain about when you go to your shows, explain your shows and how do you, how do you come out there and you go on stage and you perform? Uh, I perform like a fucking maniac at times, but it also depends on the venue. Some venues are small, some venues are big, some venues have a bigger crowd, some venues have like a small crowd, but either, it's a mix between a lot of things, though. I dealt with some crowds that actually like, uh, you know, raised total hell, and it was the first time that they ever heard of me coming through, and I think that was in like, um, uh, what, what, what was it? Um, it was up in Attleboro, Massachusetts. Stuff I did, I did a show like up there, and it was like next to a fucking police station. You know what I mean? But like, it was not really like my type of genre of music either. Like, it was more of like um, what do you call a trap rap show? And I got booked on it. But either way, uh, it, Patterson Creations, like it was a very fucking ugly ass venue. And it was next to the police station, but at the same time, though, there was a decent crowd, and they, and they still, you know, like gave me some support. I always appreciated that though, but the shows itself, the shows always speak for itself, really, no matter what. I There's a lot of unexpected things that always happen, but no matter what, the shows always speak for themselves. Hmm. And, and as, you, as you perform these shows, uh, what is the most like, craziest experience that you have experienced in performing your shows? Um, there was a show um, I did up in like Providence, opening up for Twisted. It was a mystery show with uh, my good friend Lenan, and like during her set, like I seen like fucking people go nuts and shoes flying across like everywhere, you know. And um, even right after I joined up with Earworm Entertainment, like I've done a couple shows, and I could see based out of like their fans itself and what they collected as a group of people that like. It all combined, and I actually saw like the meaning of like people like searching me up, checking me out, and you know, when I did those shows, I got nothing but like great responses and like good, good like good support. And that's all that truly matters too, because that just means to me that the message got across to people too. But I, I've been through some crazy ass experiences though. Let, let me tell you that though. Like there was this one time, um, I was playing in Elmira, New York, and some kid. Uh, like right after my set, he wanted me to try to brand like like his back, 
and like he had like a letter like each letter out of like whole alphabet and he was just like torching it up and he's just, just like you're J proper right i'm like yeah and he's like hey take this letter i want you to bring it at my back i'm like bro i'm not doing that no, i don't care and i never did so i, I thought that was the most messed up experience mm-hmm. i've probably ever been through though but that was the most craziest thing that someone's actually ever asked me to do especially a complete stranger too you know, I mean, because even though you come at a festival, some people go there fucked up, man. It's just like, oh, hey, man, you want to take that? Though, yeah, you can, yeah, give him his brand. Hey, hey, you got a cute face. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> fuck, you know, some people just like don't think of that though, too. Though, but like, as a prophet, I would always say though, no matter what, stay illuminated, keep an open mind, my friend. You know, that's what it's all about. Keep, keep an open mind. <laughs> well, the, you know, crazy experiences. Has anybody come and asked you to give us a scream? We want to scream. We want to scream. Well, straight up though, J. Poppy, you know it's coming from Earwood Batch. Earwood Batch. What's up, yo? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you What do you see yourself doing in the future? Um, with you know, your music. Uh, with my music. <clears throat> well, it's definitely gonna expand, and the more music that I do make, the more I feel like I'm getting better with it, though. So I think it's either gonna, it's gonna get better from here because it's every single time, like I even do a show, more notices, more people just listening to the music. It always feels great, and I don't take that for granted at all. You know, like I, I appreciate that so much, and. Uh, to be honest with you, like there's so many branches of music out there that's gonna be explored like later in the future that I would not even really know as uh, as I would say fucking Jay Prophet like you know a man who's actually really good at predicting shit like I really wouldn't know what would happen but whatever is going to happen it's definitely going to be good you know That's cool. we, we want that to be the best of the future for you of course Straight so up, man. Uh, uh, we ask a random person so what would you choose between a certain, you know, object or a certain game or a certain movie? Uh, okay, so okay. we go back and forth okay. and we just, just throw this out there. So yeah, we'll sure, give you okay. a random one that states on starting with a video game. Um, okay. What would you take, uh, Mortal Kombat or Tekken? Mortal Kombat all the way, straight <laughs> up, man. And then we go into visual. <laughs> what was that, yo? We go into visual. Butts or boobs? Uh, you know, I I like both, man, but I have to say the butt. Definitely the butt. Shake it. <laughs> Dogs or cats? Um, yeah, sad to say I actually have both my own little personal life yeah i have like three dogs and two cats but honestly though hey i would honestly say people you know cats are people too and you can read their personality so well too and if you look deep within and you talk with them I'm telling you it's pretty simple to treat a cat because they understand you they're they're patient than dogs though that's all i know but yeah um should I see some of my cats like attack my dog sometimes and they'll do, 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 be running up in the kitchen. They run up in the chair and get away with the dog will come in and be like, you motherfucker, you're lucky. I mean, I, I'm not gonna climb up on that chair and beat your ass right now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's some funny shit, but I have to say though, like I um, I admire bulls and uh, I think cats are very intelligent animals as well. They're pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, as, as much as you have the dogs and cats, Going back and forth, what you do? What would you cuddle up with when you want to watch horror movies or romantic movies? Bro, it's 2018. Romantic movies are overrated, <laughs> man. Um, I as much I seen a shit ton of horror movies, but I would probably say neither nowadays. All sci-fi is the way to go. Mmm, and I agree. Sci-fi all day. Straight. Uh, well, I I don't want neither one of these, but snakes or spiders. Um, you know, I was always afraid of spiders. Snakes didn't always sound good to me. I'm, a, I'm always afraid of snakes, but yeah, I would definitely have to go with spiders on that one. Mm. Well, that's good. We, we, we appreciate as the people of, uh, of this interview. Was there, is there anything as we can see what you have said to us that you can say back that 
you the final thing you can say. Oh, like, uh, like say back to my fans yes. or something like that? Your um, fans and your, your friends, um, family. My friends, family, <laughs> yeah. Um, thanks for the support. You know, keep listening to my shit. Keep updated. Check me out. YouTube, Reverb Nation, SoundCloud, EarwormEntertainment.com. Check out some of my other homies coming from Earworm. Check out their music. Check out mine. More shit's going to be coming out. We got... Now we're gonna be coming out a self-titled album, so uh, yeah, keep on the lookout and check it out. Stay sick, stay illuminated, brothers. All right, and that's a wrap. Right, thank you for this interview, <laughs> <laughs> and that's a wrap.